everybody, a very warm welcome to today's edition of In Conversation with the Crew. Now, it's not very often that you get two Ruths in a room. <laughs> and you've got two on the same screen today, so I'm absolutely thrilled to bits to welcome Ruth Wilkinson from the Consult Centre. Hi Ruth, how are you? I'm very well, you? Yeah, not too bad at all, thank you. Fantastic to have you here today, and um, thank you very much for the stuff that you've been doing for us on the Mothership over the last few weeks, the masterclasses. And I know there's a few other little bits and bobs that we've got in the pipeline that we'll touch on a little bit later on. But for those that don't know you and don't know who you are or what you do, do you just want to give us a bit of a, a heads up on the other Ruth? Uh, yeah, two Ruths in the same room, mm -hmm. double the trouble, isn't it? Right, so let me think the best way to describe. So I own the Consult Centre, started it about three or four years ago, and we concentrate on business growth. But we do that in a couple of ways. So... I'm a business coach and have been for a number of years and I lecture at the University of Cumbria and at more point like a business school on social enterprise leadership, that kind of thing. So I do some of that and I do private clients for, for coaching and business coaching and do some life coaching stuff and I supervise other coaches. So that's that bit. When it comes to the consult centre, we're a PR agency ultimately. So we started years ago training people on how to do their social media for business and that went really well but what, what we found was that clients liked it liked to understand it but they were too busy trying to run their business so the first couple of clients came back and said actually would you do it for us like yeah okay I, we, can, we can do that for you and that was three years ago I don't know 40 odd clients later and now we've got a team of us that are graphic designers web builders movie editors, well, movie sounds a bit important, film editing, we do a lot of film editing, podcast edits, uh, brochure design, and then we also do a lot of the pro training. So we are Facebook accredited pros, Google pros, Wix, LinkedIn, all the things you'd expect us to have in order to be able to train um, other people or manage all their accounts for them. So quite a lot under one roof, really. I was going to say, where is the roof? <laughs> well, yeah, I know there's a lot of it, but there's a, a good team now. So at one point, it was me on a 23-hour clock with my eyes like that. Now it's not so bad. <laughs> Where are you based? Where would we find you? Based in Morecambe. Right. We're very lucky because we're right on the beach. So we have the most amazing views. And uh, it means the team can all go out for a trot down the prom from the office under normal circumstances. And, yeah. uh, Whatever but, they are. But, yeah. But at the moment, they're all, they're all working at home. So we're lucky because we're a digital business. When we knew lockdown was coming, everyone kind of scrambled to the office, picked up a, a Mac or modelled off down the prom with it. And everyone's now working in their own homes, which hasn't been too much disruption for us. It's been disruption for our clients, but not too bad for us. So, And how many of us in the team then? Uh, six in the team. So you've got everything from an office manager, Nikki, who keeps me in order, to make sure that I keep to my schedules, um, through to... Betsy, who does a lot of our graphic design, Stephen, who does creative and uh, film editing and podcast edits. And then we've got Leslie, Tom, and a couple of others that come in freelance, but Leslie and Tom are permanent as well. And they do content management and all the optimization work that we do as well. Because you must have seen a massive change. If you go back to when Network She started 13 years ago, and a lot of it came about because I was helping my daughter set up her own business. And there wasn't the social media platforms that there is today. We're going back to 2007. And now her whole business is driven through Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram and what have you. And obviously a lot of what we do is, is social media based. So what was your background before then? Because this didn't exist, did it, earlier? No, no, it didn't. So um, I've worked in corporate, best part really, 25 years or something. So... Things like call centre director for BT, O2. I started on the phones on at BT when I was 20, 21, I think. Um, and then went on to lead the teams and then went on to lead the divisions. So BT, O2, uh, AXA, used to manage the director of AXA for a bit, um, a technology company called TSG. And then I set up my own telecoms business with two business partners. And we sold that to a large telecoms business and after three years, and I went and joined their board, which was Daisy Communications. And uh, I was their director of um, learning and development and, and did some sales work for them as well. And I left there 
January of this year. So I'd run them at one point side by side, which was exhausting. Yeah, absolutely. And, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So and I just thought it was, you know, when you might be one of those people who, when I look at me 20 years ago, that used to think that that old bird needs to shuffle on a little bit, that maybe I was, I'd, I'd, I'd done what I needed to do, I think. And yeah. yeah, when you feel that you're contributing hours and hours and hours a week and lots of them, and you're doing really good work, but you're doing it at the end of the day, it's for somebody else. And uh, I took that step to decide that I would do it for me and a few others instead, so. Oh, fantastic. Mm. How did you feel then when, Covid kicked in and you're only a couple of months into it all and you're like oh yeah um I was lucky really because because I've been running it by then for three years or so and I'd, I'd, I'd the team was really well set up so it's kind of like me dipping in and out and, and and before that I'd always worked independent so I could work at home so I could do a bit of both and whatever and, and Daisy knew that and they I'd been trying to leave Daisy for about two years before I finally kind of managed to get out the door so they were quite supportive of it and I think the only thing for us that kicked in was, well, one is that we're a really close team and we spend a lot of time. And when you're doing design and, and creative and you're training people, you like to, you know, we look over each other's shoulder, you know, what do you think to this and what does that look like? And of course that doesn't happen. Um, so that's the bit we've missed the most and just the banter and being in the office together. So that kicked in, but we've done loads of, zoom fatigue zoom every single day to make sure everybody's all right and then some of our clients had some you know i really did wobble and worry because we were fortunate really given our business but a couple of our clients that are big ones you know we have a client who's got six hairdressing salons well it was just overnight that they closed one of our clients is um has a very large holiday destination out in portugal you know that stopped and a lot of ours are pubs and hospitality and stuff. So there was a bit of a level for me thinking, oh, God, if these guys pull, we're going to have a problem. Um, but they didn't because they realised that regardless of when they open, if they get forgotten about, absolutely, somebody else fills that void. So if you turn that tap off, somebody will take that, that part of the stage and you won't be able to get it back so easy. So it's been a bit rough initially, but they all held held on so we've been very very lucky fantastic because yeah. one of the big things that we've been banging the drum about since this all started as you said is visibility and making sure that you're there people can see you even if they can't actually walk through your door or yeah. purchase your products they can still have that level of communication and because we are zooming and we're all on you know the internet and the big wide world we're actually speaking to people we would never have met yeah because we're, you know, we're in a different yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So what would be your sort of top tips about the visibility side of it? Because you don't want to be seen to be doing the hard sell, but you don't want to disappear into the, um, the black hole yeah. of nothingness either. Oh. And, and it's a really good question because I must have done two or three different versions in terms of people have asked me exactly that. You know, what the hell was supposed to post? And, um, and it's the same advice I give even when before COVID, which is educate them, don't flog to them take them on the, the the understanding of what you do and why you do it and talk about how passionate you are talk about the benefit of it give them free content you know most of what we do 80 percent of what we do is given away free and it's given away free because when that person goes to make that decision to pay for something who are they more likely to come to they're going to come to the person who's been in the background helping them but very nicely and very gently in the background so often conversations that when they call us to do business with us, either start with so-and-so's referred me to you or I've seen your stuff. And so it works every time. So for us, it's about accountability and credibility. If you're authentic and you've been giving stuff away, every time you post something, you're being given the opportunity to explain to that potential customer why you. And if you're not doing that, why would they then come to you post, pre or during COVID. So, Absolutely. yeah. They want to feel as though they've developed a relationship with you because you'll have gone down half the route before you've even got there, won't you, really, when you think about it. Yeah. And it'd be great to already have that sort of inbuilt trust that you, you have with someone when you then decide to make that purchase or, yeah. you know, sign exactly. the roll over or whatever it is that you commit to do. 
Yeah, exactly. So an example of that would be a few of our um, a few of our clients are therapists of some description, beauty therapist, or a few that are uh, clinical massage therapists and stuff. So we've been posting things out like you know when they can do a homemade treatment and um, you know what's the best way to look after your nails or things that really some some people get nervous and go, oh, I'm giving away the tricks and therefore they won't come and pay me. Well, no, they will because no matter what they do and how that end consumer uses that information, it's not done with the expertise of the of the business. But it means that it feels like, and it, it, and it is, that they are taking an interest in their client and worrying about how they're managing, even if they're not seeing them every day. Absolutely. So, you know. And you want the experience, don't you? You don't want to be sitting at home filing your own nails and... No, no, all that. no. I, Equally like a pub, you know, it, we've, had, we've been doing all sorts of stuff for pubs. I mean, really very humorous posts down to, you know, here's 15 labels of beers from the 1960s. Whoever gets it gets a night of free beer on the opening night. And just, you know, so it's about engagement. It's not about likes. It's about engagement. If you've got an engaged audience, the likes doesn't matter. It's about whether or not they feel some connection towards you as a business owner and you as your brand absolutely yeah. taking you back to the young girl that was looking at the old bird sense about time she moved on <laughs> yeah yeah what, what did the young Ruth think she was going to do because like i said this whole business didn't exist when you were coming out of school no um i'm not sure that because i fell into doing work at, at bt when i first started part-time and then I, um, I've got quite a high responsibility theme. So I've got this thing about making sure everything's all right, and quite accountable. So leadership was then obvious, I think. And then I don't necessarily know that I had a plan, but I was dead fortunate that I had really good leadership in two or three businesses that right. kind of spotted that and went, right, okay, we need you to go and do so-and-so. And they let me go and play at my own game, which is just the best thing ever. Um, but I think that what I did know was I wanted to be responsible for something. I wanted to have the pressure of your numbers aren't in or, I don't know, the calls aren't answered or the customers are happy or unhappy. So I'm not so sure it was about the job as much as it was about the attributes and the behaviours that I was most um, drawn to. And then when I moved to lead, well, certainly learning development, that was just the best job ever. Taking somebody who doesn't know, you know, and training them through in, you know, big induction classrooms until they walk out and kind of say, right, thanks very much. I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm raring to go. Um, so I suppose it's that you get that knowledge, don't you? And then you make sure that you're, you're passing it on to everybody else. So it obviously give you, gives you a buzz. Oh yeah, absolutely. Teaching, tutoring, uh, teaching is the wrong word, tutoring. And when people go, oh my God, I did not know it did that that's when you know you've just given them value. It's when they go off the call and say, I've been on loads of training courses and I've never had a training course like that. You know, it's that kind of feeling. Of course, that makes you feel good, doesn't it? So Absolutely, definitely. And where do you see the whole sort of social media world going over the next few years? What we in for, what I've got to learn next? Oh, you want to see what LinkedIn is just about to send out. So as LinkedIn pros, we get the advanced release updates. And um, funnily enough, I was about to do a course the other day and I logged on in the morning to the LinkedIn Pro portal. It said, these new releases are going out this afternoon. Like, oh. Right, okay, so I need to rehash all of that stuff. So what's it got in store for you is that it is the best time ever to be a consumer of any of those platforms mm -hmm. because they are literally going toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. So when Google My Business brings out a new development facebook has to match it if facebook matches it linkedin have got to match it so what's happening is as a consumer it's one of the weirdest times ever and i'm trying to explain this to some of my clients that you are getting thrown stuff for free in the race that they're in to take the leadership of the market so it couldn't be a better time to get on those platforms the only issue however is only well, 80% of users of platforms are using 15% of them because they just don't understand what else it does. And why would they? No one's ever told them. But they do some really clever things. And, and I think 
that'll only continue to grow. But the problem is if you're not staying up to speed with it, that gap gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you can have a profile and you think it's working, but you can't understand why no one's seen it. And it's because three new little tricky bits in the back haven't been completed or they've changed algorithms. So it's a constant learning really, but, um, but when you master those or when you get guided through them, yeah, the results are just terrific. Absolutely terrific. And have you got a favourite or are they like children? You're not allowed to have a favourite. <laughs> <laughs> um, Different clients use different platforms. And one of the things that we do a lot of is that we interview our clients before we take them on so that they understand who their client is. You'd be surprised often that they've not been given the opportunity to do that, really sit and think about who their clients are. And normally most businesses have got between six to eight different client types and they will all exist on different platforms. So an Instagram user profile will have different interaction to a LinkedIn user so we've got to make sure that the content is created to match the platforms that it goes on with the right messaging for the recipient of that message so there's a lot more science to it sometimes than just i'll put this on there um a lot of planning goes into it so in terms of i know i, I you know i i will train people on twitter i am a twitter pro but it's my least favorite just because it harnesses such negativity at times um yeah. And the fact that we've got some political figures that put stuff on there that's just nonsense. Um, and it probably doesn't convert business as well as the other platforms do. Right. So if you were to talk to a solicitor or an accountant, it'd be a LinkedIn hit? And it's LinkedIn first, Google second. Yeah. Google My Business that most people do not understand and don't work is one of the most powerful. So it kind of level pegs with, with LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you stand on TikTok? I'm a bit cautious of TikTok. So there's a lot of editing, film editing needs to go into TikTok. And it's quite a personal platform. Whilst we do a lot of film editing and we do a lot of audio work, there's some, some real security and safety concerns around TikTok at the moment. And until we're comfortable that we're not going to expose our clients' brands to the security issues, we're just going to hold... Back. it's a little bit like snapchat it's got lots of failure points in it technically right. so i know it's an explosive platform but it's got lots of failure points in yeah. and who owns it is it owned by one of the big guys or is it a, a new phenomenon it's a new phenomenon um but there is a debate around who's going to buy that so there is yeah. there is some secret share ownership in there yeah of other platform users yeah fantastic mm. so moving forward we're really excited because we're going to be working with you next week on our LinkedIn okay. course. Yeah. Can you give people a little bit of an idea of what they're going to be in for? Yeah, so the LinkedIn course is very much designed for somebody who wants to understand it. And there's proficiency of users. So you can have someone who's been on it a long time um, and you can have somebody who's really new to it. That doesn't really matter in the terms of you will get guided through every single step of that course. So to the point whereby the screen is shared and the box is shown and the aspects are done and we talk through every single part of it. But it's not just about, oh, fill this in here. It's about the why and the how and what for. A lot of these courses that you'll see will just do a, you need to fill your profile in and here's how you do it. Well, that's not what we need. What we deliver is you need to fill it in. This is the best way to do it. This is why you need to do it this way. You know, And this is what you'll benefit from doing it and that kind of thing. So. They'll get a very guided experience. Um, I did one last week where somebody turned up on the, well, two people did. So I use LinkedIn all the time. I thought, right, okay. Somebody else hadn't ever used it. We got to the end of the course and the lady messaged me privately on Zoom and said, I've been using it for 16 years and I'm horrified. I had no idea it did that. So, um, so that's really what will happen. It will be, you'll come off there and think, you, know, you might not master it immediately, but you'll know what you need to do and you'll know why you need to do it. And then you just invest the time and enjoy doing it rather than this task of thinking you have to be on it. It will make it enjoyable and you'll get more benefit from that and more enthusiasm because you'll understand why you're doing what you're doing and what it can do for your business. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it already. I've got four and a half thousand people on my group and I don't talk to any of them. I read that this morning and uh, sorry, I saw that this morning and you're just like me. I've, I've got a, a lot. 
well, you will over a period of time. I've got a lot and, you know, I, I do articles and blogs and videos and stuff. And of course, um, it makes a big difference. But you're right. You know, it, it, unless someone shows you how you're supposed to know, these things move on so quickly. So absolutely fantastic. So I'm looking forward to that. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us so we get a feel of who we're going to be working with and what we're in for if we deal with the consult centre? I, I think the, the main thing to, to share is about um, it without wanting to sound like a smart, what do I say, so I swear they're smart pants. The, the training that anyone gets, regardless of any subject, is being delivered from somebody who's accredited and who also trains LinkedIn and trains Facebook and is part of all the Facebook, you know, forums and pro certificates and stuff. So there's that part that it's, it's relevant, it's up to date and it's been accredited. Yeah. But we don't take any enjoyment out of trying to bamboozle anybody. So it's, yes, I get all that information, but my job is to make that information relevant. So the difference around, I think, our training is one of the first things we do when people come on is say, right, what, what do you want to get out of it? What's your business and why, why do you feel that this is the right course? And what would make this a really good course for you? We spend the first half hour doing that and everyone chats and I understand all of that. So that regardless of what subject we're tutoring, when we go through it, you know, we say, right, okay, actually, Ruth, this will be useful for you because earlier on you mentioned this. So you need to pay particular attention to this bit or Susan, this bit's particularly important for you. So it feels very much like somebody has taken what you're really trying to do and then worked it back in through the training so that it doesn't feel as though you're following a standard course because you never are. You're, you're following a bespoke experience that someone is making relevant to you all the way through so and there's no jargon in it and everything gets explained and we don't just train functionally we'll train the content so we'll give you ideas all the way through you know this is a good place to put this and you could communicate this way and you could add this and you know so we do very much experience based learning all the way through and I think that's what makes us very different probably from the standard I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those, but they're a different kind of course than we would do. Fantastic. So, well, yeah. Looking forward to it. So I will see you on Wednesday the 27th of May at 10 o'clock in the morning for the course. You will. And thank you very much for being the other Ruth in the room. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.